say when well, we can't serve the come back because they're women. They're, we're going to have to look at these special reasons and see what you have to be able to do from a physical, mental, training, or whatever point of view. And that's going to be the deciding factor of whether who can serve their male or female. And that's the way it should have been a long time ago. And we've just been a long time in getting there. And uh, so the, you've got to stay fit if you're going to stay in the military. And uh, I think we have, are reaching uh, a reason that didn't exist some years ago in addressing this, and it's long overdue. And I agree with that. And, and again, the, the point being that for any job, there are qualifications. And if those qualifications, if, those, if there are criteria that uh, include a particular level of physical fitness or strength or you know, 15 volts or 20 volts or something like that, um, or endurance, uh, for, a mil for a particular military job, and that is something that every, you know, every, it, everyone has to be subject to the same standards. Like that. Um, so, uh, not presume that men can do it, not presume that women can do it. All right, so you, you have had a wonderful career in the military, and you would have stayed in if it were a little bit more welcoming. So, I think both of you would say that this is a, a good place for women these days, but there, there are problems but we're acknowledging them as a society. Would we each have some final words here? And we'll go through each other. <laughs> well, I've never had a day's regret about having gone to the Canadian Air Force. And I'm glad I had that career. <clears throat> I would like to say something with respect to uh, the person, one of the functions uh, sponsoring this, the one National Women's History Committee. There are only three major edifices in this country that pay tribute, national tribute to women. The first is the National Women's Hall of Fame up in New York. The second is the Women in the Arts Museum here. And the third one is the Women in Military Service Memorial. And I have to say, unfortunately, that probably today, two of those three are closed. <laughs> so I would assume that the Women in the Arts is still open. <laughs> so not a, a federal entity. The other two, ours is closed, and I'm sure it's as uh, so as the National Women's Hall of Fame. So this is an important thing, I think, and that is to have a museum where we tell the story, the broad story of what women's contribution has been here in the United States. So keep following the story of the National Museum of Women of the Arts and if you can uh, donate, I'm sure that Joan Wages would be thrilled yes, she to, would. to take <laughs> money from me. or Whether it's small or large, she would just be happy to take it, as I always am for the women for more.
uh, these, these issues of great public, uh, public interest. And uh, I had nothing to do with organizing tonight's um, session, but I can say this is precisely the kind of session that we had in mind when we began working together uh, with, the, uh, with the museum. Um, the, and it's an opportunity actually for academics to, uh, to become better known in the larger conversation about the issues that relate to women. In the history department, I may say, which is a, a department of 40 people, uh, we have eight of my colleagues who are interested in gender and women's history in some aspect, along with their other specialties. And once we got this started, my colleague, uh, uh, Patrick Schulteis, uh, who really uh, carried the heavy water on, on this for the department, once we got started, we, we realized that all over George Washington University there are academics in other fields very much interested in the kinds of issues that were discussed tonight. So frankly, we're thrilled. I, I think I can speak for the, the broader uh, university community. We're thrilled with this uh, partnership and we look forward to many, many years of sponsoring these programs. Our next program is on November 12th, uh, 5.30, and it's uh, Women in, uh, in Business um, with uh, Daryl McKissick, who's the uh, business uh, owner and founder of a business here in Washington, and um, with a, one of the country's most distinguished business um, historians, Pamela Laird from the University of uh, Colorado. Thank you very much.